Mike, Jerry, and Stanley back here on BTN Live. As promised, we're joined by a special guest. He is the head coach of the team. Just about to join the Big Ten at Rutgers. He is Kyle Flood. Kyle, let's uh, start off with some big picture stuff with you. Big Ten fans who are watching this show haven't seen you much, haven't seen your team much. Describe what the Rutgers program is like. Aggressive defense, pro-style offense. What is your team? Well, I, th I think what you just said is a great start. I think when they see us play, the first thing I think they're really going to enjoy is how hard our team plays. And we're going to play a physical brand of football, and I know that's not foreign to the Big Ten Conference uh, on defense. Uh, we've never played with maybe the, uh, the biggest guys in the country, but we move a lot. Uh, we run to the ball exceptionally well. Uh, we've always really predicated our defense on speed first and athleticism. And uh, we're probably a little bit bigger now than we've been uh, in the past, but we've never had to sacrifice athleticism and speed to get there. And on offense, they're going to see a, a pro-style offense. But, you know, for us, a pro-style offense uh, can, can take a lot of shapes and a lot of forms. You're not going to see us really with two backs in the backfield the entire game. You'll see us in multiple personnel groups, multiple formations, shifts and motions, and a team that values running the football first and then the play-action game down the field. You know, the other thing, Coach, is – I want to get to something that fans who watch your program will understand, the chop. You've been with this program way before, dating back to Greg Schiano. What are the origins of the chop? What does that mean? You know, we, uh, I've been fortunate now that this will be my 10th season uh, coming up here at Rutgers and the first seven as, as the assistant head coach and the offensive line coach and, and the next three as the head coach. But, you know, the chop in our program, you, you see kind of the physical, you know, chop that our players do when they make a big play. Uh, but for us, really, the chop is the, is the ability to focus on the task at hand. And, and it's something we use as a program uh, to stay in the moment. And, and you know, when, you, when you're playing football or, or you're, you're doing something in life, you know, no matter how great or even if it doesn't go the way you want it to, at, at that point you've got to move on and you've got to move on to the next play. And, and that's really what it signifies in our program. Coach, you've been at Rutgers as a member of the AAC, the Big East. From what you know about the Big Ten, what's, what's different about the Big Ten than those conferences? Compare those three conferences for us. You know, it's, it's really three distinct conferences. And, he, and even the, the Big East, when we were in it, had some change. And we saw some different teams from time to time. And it really, the Big East evolved a little bit more you know, as it evolved into the AAC, into a little bit more of a spread offense conference. And I know... Uh, that there are some programs in the Big Ten that spread you out, but those programs you know, still value running the ball first. And I think, you know, to me, when I look at the Big Ten and we, and we as a program, you know, we've done the research on it. The one thing we know for sure is that it's going to be a physical football game you know, week in and week out. And I thought our recruiting class this year reflected that. We took four offensive linemen. We took six defensive linemen. And we didn't break the mold of the type of player we were looking for. Uh, but we knew that as we go into this league, we knew we we're going to need to build depth. Coach, guys like yourself and I, I grew up in New Jersey. We know that New Jersey is a fertile ground for talent. And the Big Ten historically, schools like Ohio State and Michigan and Penn State have went into New Jersey and taken some of the top talent. So going forward, now that you're competing against these schools, what's your plan to keep the Jersey boys home? You know, we felt, we felt for a long time as a program that recruiting has to start at home. And there are so many great players in the state of New Jersey. It's, it's not a surprise to us that so many schools around the country come to New Jersey uh, to recruit. You know, but over the years, we've always been able to find the players that are right for our program. And, and I think that is the most important thing in recruiting. You know, the recruiting classes really should be judged three, four, and five years later. And what you're trying to do as, as a recruiter and as a program is find the high school players that ultimately will develop in your program. And every year, every player we recruit we recruit with one goal in mind, that that player is going to be able to help us win the Big Ten championship. And that didn't change this year with this year's recruiting class. Coach, I'm curious about your summer and spring study of your opponents. I mean, not a lot of staffs have been through this where you're completely changing conferences and going to have all new conference opponents. How have you chosen as a staff to break that down and to study the opponents during the offseason? You know, we, we will look at everybody on the schedule to, 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 to a differing degree. You know, the teams that we play a little bit earlier uh, in the season, you know, we'll do preliminary game plans for those schools. Uh, the ones we play a little bit later in the year, you know, we will look at them, but we'll rely mostly on next year's tape because we know the personnel is going to change. And by the time you play them, you know, with attrition on the team, you don't know exactly what they're going to look like at that point. 
But we went through a little bit of this last year, you know, and last year with the conference changing and with some teams moving in and out of the conference we were playing in, uh, we, we got some practice at it already. So I, I think uh, as we get to spring practice and as we go through the ending part of, of spring and into spring recruiting, you know, we'll have all that stuff done by the time we come back for the summer and we'll be able to put the books together and then really focus for the most part on the first four games of the season. Whether it was last year or this year, Coach, did you – lean on anyone that had been through the experience before of changing conferences? You know, I, I did not. I did not. And the, the people I, I leaned on the most were the people on my staff. And this year I think I'm going to do the same thing. You know, having somebody like Ralph Friedgen, who, who comes in as our offensive coordinator, uh, it has already in just a couple of weeks been a great resource for me uh, as a head coach. And, and there's really nothing that I will deal with as a head coach that he didn't deal with in his time as a head coach at Maryland. And uh, he's been on some, some really tremendous staffs over the years and, and, again, been a very valuable resource for me. Coach, now you talked about uh, spring recruiting. Do, do you see yourself now being more aggressive in the Big Ten footprint now that your program is going to travel and play in some of these marquee stadiums and you can have some of these historic programs like Michigan and Penn State come and play in New Jersey? Is that going to help you now recruit the Big Ten footprint? You know, I, I think the, the question you ask is, is a little bit of a tricky question because – I think recruiting always has to begin at home. And for us, our recruiting footprint has always been the state of Rutgers. And that begins with New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, southeastern New York, Connecticut, Maryland, the D.C. area. Delaware has been very good to us. And then we've always gone to Florida. And that's been our, our primary footprint in recruiting. Uh, but really what the Big Ten has opened up to us is, is access to the Midwest. And even in our last recruiting class, you, you see players committed to us you know, from the state of Minnesota. Uh, you see a player committed to us, Logan Lister, from the state of Texas. You know, we have a, an offensive line coach on our staff in Mitch Browning and a wide receiver coach, Ben McDaniels, uh, who have very natural ties in Ohio. And, and, I, and what we have always said is we certainly will begin recruiting at home with the state of Rutgers. But if there is a player in a non-traditional area who, who wants to get a great education and compete for the Big Ten championship every year, uh, we are certainly going to look at that player at Rutgers. Kyle, give me the best part and the worst part of this past season. I think the best part of, of every season is watching the younger players develop. And, you know, it's certainly the, the, the entire season didn't go the way we wanted it to. Uh, but watching our players play that last regular season home game uh, against South Florida and, and the heart and the fight that they played with really I thought was a great example of what our program is. And, and that was probably the most exciting thing. I think that, you know, one of the harder things is what would be the way I would say it is, uh, you know, yet when you play a lot of young players, and we played 18 first and second year, 18 first and second year players on our team last year, played a significant role. Sometimes that doesn't look the way you want it to look. And as a coach, you got to stay positive because those kids are young and they're going to be really, really high quality players. Uh, but there, there's nothing more valuable than the experience of going out there and doing it. And when you get that experience at an early age, uh, it could be uh, it could be interesting at times for sure. 